Hello and welcome to another how-to guide and a big welcome to The Sim Hanger. My name's Mark, The Sim Hanger, for all things flight sim related. A quick note before we get started, the aviators liveries for nearly all the aircraft are now available for free in the marketplace. Fairly quick download, go get yours now. VR was added in a Microsoft Flight Simulator update on 22nd December. In this guide I'll show you where to find it, so you can jump straight into VR. And also, where are the settings and what are the implications? I'll highlight those settings that have the biggest impact on performance in VR. But unfortunately what I'm not going to be able to do is tell you which are the best settings for you. The vast array of different headsets, different graphics cards and CPUs means the number of variables are huge. It's a matter of changing a setting, then going back into the sim and see if performance has improved. And it's a process of elimination. The only thing I'd say is don't get too hung up on the frame rates. What you're after is a smooth performance. And also make sure that your graphic drivers are up to date as well as Windows. This can help resolve quite a lot of incompatibility problems and hassles. With that out the way, let's get started. We're now in Microsoft Flight Simulator and the first place we'll want to go is to the Options tab. Click on that. We'll be presented with three options. We're going to choose General. Once we're in that submenu, on the left hand side make sure you're on the Graphics tab. And you'll see along the top it says PC. Click the arrow and it changes to VR. This is a great feature, so it holds two sets of graphic settings, one standard PC and one for VR. By either clicking the arrows or by moving the marker on the bar, you're able to change the settings. Now it's beyond the scope of the quick start guide to go through each and every setting. Plus there are also quite a few updates happening in terms of Windows Mixed Reality and within the sim itself. So at the moment it's a developing and changing picture. And at a later stage when things settle down I will present a more detailed setting video. But by far the most important setting is render scaling. Lower resolution headsets are probably going to be happy at between 90 and 100. Higher resolution headsets like the HP Reverb Pro and the G2, well you're going to have to turn that down to get an acceptable performance. I've still got much testing to do but I've found something between 60 and 75 is a worker for me. I have the Hewlett Packard Reverb Pro. The second big hitter is ambient occlusion. And my recommendation is turn that off if you're struggling to find a happy medium in terms of performance. We'll come back to some setting detail shortly. There are further settings under the Traffic tab. By clicking on this, we see the submenu. My traffic's on real time online. AI traffic has a bigger hit on performance. For the other settings, it's a matter of try and test and see what works. The last tab on the left hand side is VR mode. And there are three important settings here. VR activate and deactivate. The toolbar toggle so you can bring up the toolbar whilst you're in VR. Both of these I suggest should be put to a button on your peripheral. The spacebar is camera reset. And this restores your position as the pilot in the cockpit. I've left mine on spacebar. Cockpit focus is quite a nice feature. Just click the right mouse button and you lean in so you can see the instruments more clearly. But for now let's turn back to some settings. As opposed to running through my settings which may or may not be suitable for your application. There is a great source of information on the Microsoft Flight Simulator forum with tips and advice. For example it says here Windows Mixed Reality a new runtime was issued on 22nd of December so make sure you update it. There's advice for Oculus and Steam users as well. It says the sim's been optimized for the HP Reverb G2 and the G1 and Samsung Odyssey. There's also information on OpenXR. OpenXR has been around for quite a while but has recently received some love and attention. I've downloaded it, it's available from the Microsoft Store. It's free of charge. OpenXR offers motion smoothing to make your flight sim experience a little bit better. 
I've still got some experimenting to do, but I've seen a small improvement. Let's take a quick look at OpenXR. OpenXR is predominantly a portal for cross-platform compatibility and is not necessary for Windows Mixed Reality users. However, it does contain a number of settings that could be useful. Once you've downloaded OpenXR development tools for Windows, it has a number of tabs. This is System Settings, but the one we're really interested in is the Developer Settings. Feedback seems to be that you should click on using the latest preview runtime and activate Custom Render Scale. And this is much the same as the render scaling within the sim setting. The advantage of setting it here is that the render scale within Windows Mixed Reality will not vary as you are setting it to a fixed scale. This should enhance performance and give you a more stable platform to work from. As mentioned before, I've given it a go. I've seen a small improvement, but nothing significant. But perhaps that's because I've got an i7 8700K and a 2080 Ti. Different configurations and performances could give different results. Returning to the Microsoft Flight Simulator forum, there's one thing I want to draw your attention to, and that's an article by Asmidi, VR Bang for Your Buck Performance Guide. Links in the notes below. He has done some extensive testing, albeit still in the beta stage, but it gives us a great platform to start working from. And here he's listed the settings in priority order in terms of impact on the frame rate. Render scaling being at the top, followed by anti-aliasing, terrain level of detail and so on. Bear in mind these are just a guide. I found ambient occlusion had quite a big impact. And this portion is really interesting. And here he's put a percentage in terms of the average FPS loss of changing the value from the lowest to the highest. So render scaling can have an impact of nearly 90%, whilst water waves just over 2% and so on. So if you're struggling for performance, start with render scaling, then volumetric clouds and so on. There is of course additional information available from other contributors, but this gives us a great starting base, so thank you as MIDI. And bear in mind his test was done with a GTX 1080 and an i5 8600K. Microsoft Flight Simulator under the developer settings has an option to turn on the frame rate counter. This can be very useful, but unfortunately it's not visible in VR or I haven't found a way to keep it visible at this time. For this test flight, I've set the render scaling at 70, both in OpenXR and also in the sim. I'm in Austria and at Graz. I've chosen this as it's a reasonably high density area, close to the Swiss Alps. I've chosen the DA62 for the test flight simply because it's got two engines and of course the glass cockpits. So something in the mid to heavy range in terms of frame count. I have to say looking at the sim playback it is a little bit more jerky than it was actually in the sim. Bear in mind that I am recording this with Nvidia at the same time as flying. And for some reason the Nvidia player is a little jerkier on recording than it used to be. But the sim's only been out for a day or so and there's still lots of testing to be done. I think the most important point to make is that although I've turned the render scaling down, the graphics of the simulator are such that it does not detract in any way from the enjoyment, the scenery or the realism that one experiences. Here I'm deliberately flying low and going over buildings etc. It's a bit of a stress test and we'll give it a try at night just now. My flight sim colleague JM has also been experimenting today. Due to the crazy situation we're in I'm not able to visit him but we did chat on the phone. He's got a valve index and he tells me he's flying with a render scaling of between 90 and occasionally 100. As mentioned before, I'm using the HP Reverb Pro. It's pretty smooth in sim all the way, day and night, although I am getting the odd micro pause here and there, especially in the more heavily built up areas. I gotta be honest though, I'm really enjoying this. I really get a sense that I'm flying. 
Not only are we flying at night now, but we've got some pretty heavy rain and fog around. Cloud cover has been increased and still very playable. I do need to lean in occasionally to read some of the instruments. So all that leaves me is my final conclusions. Well, the VR experience in Microsoft Flight Simulator, well, it's great. No, I go one step further, it's fantastic. Yes, there's still work to do. Yes, there's still some niggles. Yes, performance needs to improve. But let's consider the other sims in the market. They're not perfect either. I think this is a great start for Microsoft Flight Simulator.